Guada TV gives you a first look at North Central Washington's business news. You'll hear from our local business, tech, and education companies as Jenny discusses hot topics and current events with some of the best innovators and pioneers in North Central Washington. Hello, North Central Washington, and welcome to Guada TV. I'm your host, Jenny Rojanasatian, and it's a pleasure to be back in the NCW Life Channel studios filming today's episode. For today, I'm bringing in two guests from the Small Business Development Center to talk about resources and support for entrepreneurs during the COVID crisis. We've got a lot of content to cover during our two segments, so I'm going to keep this intro really short and sweet. You want to stay tuned, so come right back. Welcome to Guada TV. I have two guests today from the Small Business Development Center. Uh, we're going to be talking about resources for entrepreneurs and small businesses. But before we get there, I'd like to introduce John Morosco yep. and Ron Nielsen. Welcome to Guada TV. Thank, Thank you. you. So excited to have you on air. Uh, we talked before we started here that uh, there's a lot happening for our small businesses, a lot of struggles. Uh, there's also a lot of resources. Um, but it's not all doom and gloom. We've got some businesses thriving, new businesses starting. So before we dive there, I'd love to have the audience get to know you both a little better. And Ron, I'll start with you. Well, thank you, Jenny. I'm uh, the Eastern Washington Regional Manager, where uh, John and I both are located here in Wenatchee. I've been with the SBDC 20 years, 16 years in Washington State, and four years in Arizona. Uh, I've owned and operated three of my own businesses in Washington State for a total of 17 years. Two of the, uh, the businesses, the last two, were in Cooley Dam, a bowling alley and movie theater. And that's two industries really heavily hit during this pandemic. So you've got a lot of personal experience in your business advisory role at the SBDC. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, welcome. And uh, Ron, how about you? Um, I moved to Wenatchee about four sorry, months ago. I'm sorry, I just said Ron, John. Yeah. How about you? Uh, Sorry about I that. answer to anybody. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I moved here about four months ago. Thrilled to be here. I moved from Olympia. Um, and I've been with the SBDC about four years. I, uh, before that, I was in the SBDC in the U.S. Virgin Islands. I moved here when um, after a couple of hurricanes came up to and moved to um, Olympia and then the offer to come over here, so I, I was I was thrilled. I've also owned three businesses, and I spent oh close to forty years uh, running hotels and restaurants. Okay. So that's that that was my specialty. Okay. So uh, really incredible backgrounds with you both. Good news for us: we now have two people at the SBDC now that you've joined the team at a time where our entrepreneurs probably really need a lot of resources. So if someone's not familiar with what the Small Business Development Center is, can you give me a little background, Ron? Sure. Uh, small Business Development Centers were created as an act of Congress after what had been the worst recession, uh, 1980, of course, since then we had the Great Recession, uh, as a resource for business owners that were struggling at that time. Since then, our, our role has expanded. We work with businesses of, of all shapes and sizes from uh, pre-ventures up to uh, even working with businesses to help them sell or, or for those that are retiring, do business evaluations and help them understand the, the process of maximizing their sale. And how is the SBDC funded? Sure. We're funded in part through the U.S. Small uh, Business Administration. We have a uh, U.S. Congress uh, appropriates funding for us that is uh, given to the SBA or the SPDC program, and that happens every year. Uh, throughout the United States, all SBA dollars must be matched, so our local host here in Washington State is Washington State University. They're the lead SPDC for us, um, and we have a host of other uh, economic development groups and uh, ED, economic development councils, associate development organizations that are also partners with us in this effort. Oh, well, that's really important because it, it takes a lot of partners to help grow an, an, an ecosystem that supports entrepreneurs. Yes. So your, uh, are your resources free to entrepreneurs to tap into? Well, we don't use the word free. free. Okay. We, we say no, no cost. No, no cost, yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, but, but it is. It's, it's uh, no cost, confidential business advising. Okay. And we help people with a, with a wide variety of topics. Of course, lately it's been the 
the downturn in the economy, you know, trying to survive, uh, SBA loans, and, and other uh, tools and, and uh, webinars that we do to help people survive this, this pandemic. And let's dig into that a little bit uh, as far as events and resources. You were sharing with me on a call this week, you did 56 webinars just in the first few months of COVID. What, uh, what were some of the focuses then and, and are they the same now? Well, the topics are similar uh, with different areas of emphasis. In the beginning, when the pandemic hit and we had uh, Governor Inslee's stay at home order, that affected all of us. And as a result of that, the, uh, through Congress, there was a, an act, uh, initially there was the Economic Disaster Assistance Program was, was kicked in and Washington State was one of the first states that qualified, which meant businesses were eligible for SBA direct loans, which is quite a bit different than the traditional loans, which are received from a bank. Right, so normal funding cycle, I'm starting my small business, I go see my local banker, and they might have different loan options, including small business uh, lo SBA loans. Yeah, yeah SBA, lo when we say SBA loans for traditional bank, with, with traditional banking, it, it's a loan guarantee to the bank. Okay. It's, it's not a loan directly from the SBA. Whereas during this, this disaster declaration, uh, the SBA was given permission by, uh, by Congress to do direct loans, of which are 3.75% interest rates for typically 20 to 30 year loan amortization schedules. So pretty competitive low rate loans to, to, to really get in there and provide some emergency assistance. Uh, yes, ma'am. Right, okay. Um, then of course there was also PPP. Right, and that was, that was a new act. That came yeah. out in the CARES Act that came out just uh, shortly thereafter. And it, it was assigned to one of the existing SBA programs. But in that, it involved lenders. You'd go to a local lender, uh, receive a loan based upon uh, some calculations that the lender would help you work through. And you would receive uh, some funding that had the potential to be forgiven, which was very appealing to most of us in business. And uh, there was specific uh, items that the business could use the money for. It couldn't be used for business expansion or going out and buying new equipment, but it was available to help you with your uh, employee cost. In fact, the name of it is the uh, Payroll Protection Program, and it could also be used for three other items, uh, business operational items uh, within your business. So it was an extremely helpful program, and millions of businesses across the U.S., as well as many here in our local area, applied for those and received them from their local bank. And now uh, PPP is, uh, that, that program is done in its current form right now. They're not doing mm -hmm. new PPP, uh, but there's a lot of uh, still support needed probably in the, now the loan forgiveness piece. Right. Uh, there's a lot of questions. So you guys, have you guys been doing work in that as well? We have. So early on it was about how to access the programs, both the uh, Economic uh, Injury Disaster Loan, or known as IDLE, as well as the PPP. So the uh, uh, web early webinars were how to access it. Now we're, we're giving uh, information out to business owners on, on how to properly fill out the documentation to get that all important loan forgiveness. And literally uh, there, there's you know, hundreds of in inquiries coming in you know, across the state about yeah. this all the time. Now, how do we fill this out? And we're kind of at a bit of a stalemate right now. The, um, the lenders are waiting for Congress to take some action, of which I heard there was some action taken last night. I haven't reviewed it yet. Okay. But uh, everybody's looking for you know, the, the proper way to fill out this, this application to get that loan forgiveness. And the, obviously a lot of ambiguity and a, a lot of um, waiting at this point on what that looks like. Now let's go back briefly to the EIDL loan through SBA. Yeah. Um, they came out early in, I guess it was April, but there are still, that is still a loan package available to business owners. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. That was the uh, loan we talked about just a little bit ago. Okay. It, it, uh, businesses to apply for it would go on to sba.gov and then follow the, the links to taking you to the uh, funding programs that the SBA offers. And there you'll find a direct link to the idle loan and what you're applying for is a loan that will help you cover some of your business operational expenses. It's not a replacement of revenue or income. 
but it will help you uh, cover some of those costs. And early on it was, you know, they would take the average uh, operational cost of your business and then multiply it by a factor of six. And again, back in March, when the program was authorized, everybody was believing that it might be about a six month impact. Well, obviously it's gone you know, beyond that and will continue probably for several more months. But uh, you can apply if you're accepted in the program. Uh, you have the option of reapplying should, should the injury continue as we're experiencing now. So those of you that have received the funding, now would be a time to think about you know, going back for, for additional funds uh, if, if you need it. So still some, uh, still some funding available. I think that's really important to note because I think there was you know, a thought that those kind of resources ran out earlier this year. So again, if you know a business owner, uh, refer them to the SBA and to check out all of the resources. Now I wanna go into some more advice, but we do have to head to a commercial break. So stay tuned, when we come back, we'll be continuing here with uh, Ron and John from the SBDC to talk about resources. Welcome back to Guada TV. We are on air with the Small Business Development Center talking about the COVID-19 crisis and resources through the SBDC um, locally and of course nationwide. Um, Ron, before we, uh, went to commercial break, we were talking about how, you know, how back in March we thought, oh, maybe six months, and then we're past this. What are you encouraging business owners to think about in terms of long-term planning and how to view what's happened? Sure, uh, good question. From the beginning, uh, when we all experienced the shutdown, and we really didn't know how long this was going to be, we were all hopeful it'd be very quick. In fact, some of the early uh, economic forecasts were that we might come out of this as fast as we went into it, which would have been a blessing. Uh, but it didn't take long for us to begin to realize that this was going to be a long-term event, or likely to be a long-term event. So at the SBDC, we began to treat this as a recession. We, you know, there are certain economic conditions that have to happen before there's an official recession. Mm -hmm. But uh, just by the sheer magnitude of, of literally coast to coast businesses being impacted, well around the world businesses being impacted, uh, we began to advise people to think of this as a, as a recession versus just a, a one-off and, and back to work. <clears throat> so if we look at the historic trends of a recession, uh, typically recessions uh, from the time they hit, we get down in kind of the trough and then we begin to get back into recovery, there's, there's about a 16 to 18 month window there. So if we use that as the time frame for thinking about how long this may last and, and plan for it in that regards, uh, you take on a, a different mindset than thinking about it from, again, a one-off and it might be back in a few months. Uh, so strategically, what we recommend is that you uh, immediately begin to conserve cash because you're going to need that to extend out the life of your business. Uh, look at some of the essential operations that you need to keep and other things, you, of course, you begin to pair back on and also begin to renegotiate with with your lenders and landlords to try and, and get some rent abatement or uh, deferral, loan deferrals, to allow you, uh, again, to keep more of that cash to, to keep you going. Uh, if you haven't already done that, you, 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 know, you need to now, but at this stage, we're looking at, you know, how are things changing? And, and there's been a lot of changes in the landscape and, and what's going on and how businesses are responding as you indicated early on. Some businesses are doing quite well. In fact, I'm working with a couple right now that are going in for loans to expand. Uh, Which is great because there yeah. should be some winners in this economy, right? Mm -hmm. We right. don't want to see, uh, it's great to hear, especially local businesses who may have been able to, to pivot or adapt or thrive. Right. right. Yes. Um, so some businesses are going in to expand. Yes. Uh, and, and to grow or even start, right? And those mm -hmm. services, um, looking to start a business, you're actively working with clients on that. Yes, we are, yes. Okay, that's great news. Uh, now, John, I'll turn to you for those though who find themselves in the needing to adapt category. Um, what kind of advice do you have for those business owners? I think the, the first thing is really assess how your business is doing. It takes time, you know, especially around the financial status, what, what's going on. So one of the things that I recommend is pivoting. So instead of waiting for the end of the month to look at your financial statements, there are ways to look at financials on a daily basis. And by the 15th of the month, we have some tools 
that happy to share that by the 15th of the month you start to really see uh, what the business is doing and how much payroll you've spent and how much the expenses are. So it's, it's just rethinking what you're doing and uh, especially the, the payroll area, making sure that you take care of that. And a lot of business owners, or a lot of the ones I know, they're creatives, they're visionaries, they're innovators. Mm -hmm. So they're not maybe always have the accountant or the diligence on those financials. So may not have some of those tools yeah. in place, right? Is that something you come across often? Yeah, well, I'm thinking back to when I own my businesses. I'm right. laughing under the mask yeah. because I was one of those that, oh, yeah, the, the, the accountant said, Where, where's this receipt? And I said, oh, go make it up. Right. So that is not a really good way to run the business. Okay. So, But now through the training and discipline, yeah. and that's something that we, we really can sit down and help businesses uh, figure out is, okay, what does your cash flow look like, as Ron was talking about, and to to really look and, and maintain and monitor what's going on. But it is a discipline, especially during the COVID-19, when things are changing so quick, uh, so quickly. Yeah. Um, sorry. No, no, that, that's great. I just wanted to say, so things are changing quickly. Can you tell us, pivot's been the big word mm -hmm. of this year, um, and it's thrown all thrown around a lot because we're all having to do it, but can you give us some examples of some how uh, businesses can pivot or some creative ways to think about pivoting? Absolutely. I, th I think the first thing is, and we had talked a little bit about uh, something I call environmental scanning, just making sure that you know what's happening out there when, you know, just COVID-19, what's not just what's happening in, let's say, Wenatchee, but what's going on throughout the county, what's going on throughout the state, um, and then regionally, and even nationally and internationally. So you can start looking to make changes. Um, so some of the things people have done is, um, with restaurants especially, dining rooms closed. So people were coming and coming for takeout. So what they did is a lot of restaurants actually just cleared out the dining room and they put in groceries and staples and things like that. So there was one cute ad that says, would you like a roll of toilet paper with those fries? <laughs> so it's... Um, Which was the hot need back in March yeah, to get right. the toilet paper, right? So, yeah. and, and so is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. And so as that's changing, it's what are the, what are you doing to adapt to that? So there's, there's all kinds of things that are, you know, people are doing. So um, ghost kitchens is one that's where somebody can actually shuts down the facility and they're sending, they're doing orders just from basically a shutdown operation. Okay. Um, hotels, looking at, uh, there's a wonderful resort not f too far north of us that has a great Thanksgiving package that is, they're pushing, bring the whole family and we'll do special things. So they're, they're doing family thoughts with that. So some of the, um, Farm, a lot of when some of the, let's say, restaurants closed down, a lot of the local farmers and, and farms that used to deliver to restaurants don't have that anymore. So I've seen some, some people that have, some of the farmers have actually started doing um, business by delivering to homes. So it's just, it's just being innovative and creative. Yeah. Uh, and when, I guess entrepreneurs are feel, feeling stalled out or they need some support. What does that uh, look like when they come to, so how can they find you? I guess I should ask, especially right now, I would imagine you're not in office, and uh, tap into some of these kind of ideas and resources. Well, we can, uh, the Small Business Development Centers uh, for the Wenatchee, you can find us online at wsbdc.org and that'll bring up and you can actually just uh, go in and, and track us down from there. Our phone numbers are listed in there. Mm -hmm. And we're doing a lot of, we have a lot of fun doing all of these sessions virtually. So I get to work with clients from all over the state and surprisingly it's, it's very effective. Yeah. So one-on-one so -on -one virtual. And then Ron, are you still on a webinar uh, spree with content coming in? <laughs> We are still doing, uh, still doing webinars. There's colleagues from all around the state. Uh, right now, our emphasis is, is shifted to, you know, how do you market your business? You know, if you've pivoted, how do you market to get the word out to your customers? And we're uh, 
doing a lot of uh, also startup webinars. Interestingly enough, uh, in the last oh, 45 days, 60% of our inquiries coming in straight, statewide are people wanting to start a new business. So there, there's a, you know, my guess is there's people that are unemployed looking for a way to, to do something to generate an income. Or, or maybe uh, someone who uh, didn't make it in one model and now is looking to you know, start again. But th there's webinars, again, at the website John indicated, uh, wsbdc.org. And, and to contact us locally, uh, go to Wenatchee uh, at wsbdc.org. And that'll go directly to John and I. Uh, yeah, and just to reinforce, I think you, this past month, you did a webinar where you brought in state and national speakers in. So it's local content, great resources. Now, for those who are watching today's show, and uh, hopefully the business owners got, got some tips and tricks, but if you're not a business owner watching today, you're a community member, and you know, obviously we probably all have our heart tugged for what's happening. Right. How can the community support entrepreneurs right now? And what would your advice be? Sure, I would recommend, uh, as always, you know, buy local. Uh, do what you can to support our local business community. Uh, you know, they're struggling, and, and well, so a lot of them are struggling. And right now is a time that if we can step up to help them, that would be great. Uh, there have been some uh, campaigns uh, in various businesses where uh, local community members are donating money to them. Uh, I try to buy local anyway, but rather than buying on Amazon, you know, even it cost me a few dollars more on buying local now just, just to try and support our local businesses through this. And be aware that uh, I, I know the, the mask thing and, and going into the business, you have to have your mask on is something a lot of people have complained about. It's not the small business owner's uh, fault that this has happened. We're all dealing with this situation. So just be cognizant of the fact that they have to enforce the law that's being handed down and when, when the businesses are told, you know, you have to have your mask on, uh, you know, be respectful of that and mindful of that and encourage them. And by us complying and helping to, you know, obey those regulations helps put that business owner in a better position rather than us arguing with them or grousing about it. But uh, right now is the time for us to step up and support our, our small business community. You know, I think, Ron, that's a really important note on uh, as far as following the safety protocol set up by obviously our state um you're right it's not the business owner who decided well what their capacity would be or their occupancy or the safety regulations um and so we really need to support them during this time and just respect and follow those guidelines while we're in the, those establishments sure think of it as you know just like state sales tax business owners are mandated to do this they, they collect it for the state and they pass it on. Uh, these wearing masks and the six foot distancing and, and other protocols that are in place right now for our protection and, and for the business and their employee protection just makes sense. You know, we, we need to do what we can to support them through this, this uh, extremely difficult time. Yeah, absolutely. John, what about for you? Any advice for those watching in today about, about supporting um, our businesses during this time or how they can get involved? I, th I think Ron summed it up beautifully. It's, it's all of us getting together and supporting our community by shopping local and looking to see how we can help each other. And just really take a step back and say, we're all in this together and find ways, whatever you, whatever you can to get us all through this uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic. And uh, then on the other side, hopefully we have a real cohesive un uh, united group. And that's it's all of us sticking together and, and working this out together. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you both for being on the show today, sharing the resources. I hope to have you on next year to maybe share some of these success stories. It's encouraging to hear that some entrepreneurs are looking at a different business option or they're pivoting creatively to, to ensure they thrive. So we want to highlight and support that success and, of course, uh, be a resource for those who may be struggling. For those of you watching today, again, check out the SBDC. Uh, they're online. Uh, you can also reach out to us at Guada. We've got a link from our website. And one final note to add, um, if you have social media, a great way to support local businesses is to share their page, follow, comment, write a review costs you nothing, right? right and shows yeah. a lot of support, gets the word out. 
Uh, well, it's time for us to conclude, but we'll see you back here next week. Since 1999, Kawada has served as North Central Washington's Tech Alliance. As a 501c3, our mission is to bring people and technology resources together to create a thriving community. Through our work, we aim to inspire, engage, and connect. 